anytime that you are reading words on a computer screen, you are reading strings. Strings are words. And on a day-to-day -day basis, you won't have to think about strings that much because they're very simple to create. Give it the correct type, string, give it a, a variable name, double quotes, put the word inside of it, put the semicolon at the end, congratulations, you've created a string. But on a deeper level, C Sharp is doing way more because it's actually converting this string into an array-like structure of chars, which we talked about in the previous video. But this is more this is more set up to bring me to a more important point, and that is strings are immutable. Now, immutability is kind of a fancy sort of pretentious words, but let's go ahead and let's go back to the Excel spreadsheet. You see guys, programming and computer memory function very similar to an Excel spreadsheet. When I create a string, all that's going to happen is C-sharp is going to go into my computer's hardware, my computer's memory, and it's going to place a string there. But where the string is actually placed and how it's placed is a more important topic. So very similar to our Excel spreadsheet, what C-sharp is going to do is take our string and put it in a spot in memory. But you must understand one very, very important point, and this is across all programming languages. There are two places, two Excel spreadsheets to place memory. One is called the stack, one is called the heap. The stack is for simple data types. If you are not familiar with the movie Tropic Thunder, there's a character called Simple Jack. Simple Jack is very simple, and that is what the stack is. It is for very simple data types. The heap, on the other hand, is for very complex. And as you can tell, this man in this black turtleneck, he looks very, very complex. And where do you think that this string is going to be stored? Is a string complex or is a string simple? A string, believe it or not, this is actually kind of crazy, is complex. A string is going to be stored on the heap. And this is where the concept of immutability comes into play. Let's just say that there is a sequel to Tropic Thunder. I don't think that there is, but there could be. So what I do is I create the sequel, Tropic Thunder 2. And what is going to happen is that C Sharp is going to go back into the heap and it is going to assign Tropic Thunder, Thunder number two and it is going to assign it to this variable right here so that we can access it. But notice one very, very important thing. This old variable is still there. The C-sharp garbage collector will probably come by and pick it up eventually, but that variable is still there. And if we are constantly manipulating this variable, what will happen is the heap will fill up and we will run into memory issues. And this is a job for string builder. So let's go ahead, let's hop into VS Code and let's work on some strings. At the end of the day, the only thing that we can truly do in computer programming, and as complex as computer programming is, the only thing that we can really do is create, read, update, and delete data. The acronym is sometimes referred to as CRUD. You may have already heard this before. And even if we wanted to, there's nothing else that we can do. So if you can learn these four things, you've got the building blocks to literally do anything. Speaking of which, I am in the process of researching different types of fish for saltwater aquariums. Do not talk me out of buying a saltwater aquarium. I'm going to do it. And I need to store data on what type of fishes that I want. And of course, the type of fish that I want is a puffer fish because it can kill you, but it's also cute at the same time. And I think that's very cool. And I go ahead, I store my puffer fish in the pet fish, but we need to do, I, I need to ask myself more questions. Like, do I want a blue dot? Do I want a porcupine puffer fish? We need to ask ourselves the right questions here. So I need to manipulate the string to make it more specific. I have, in a sense, changed my mind. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a new string because you technically can't delete strings. So we're just going to change our string and create a new one. So what I'm going to do in order to create a new string with the porcupine puffer fish designation, I'm going to go into here and I'm going to perform what is called concatenation, concatenation. 
And also, I'm going to go up here, I'm going to just add a comment here just so that we are specific and we know that this is a create. And this is actually, concatenation is actually a form of create too because it's creating a brand new string. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go pour coupon. I think that's how you uh, say it. I'm going to add a space. Then I'm going to go into here and then I'm going to add a pet fish and watch what happens. What is going to happen is that C Sharp is going to take those two strings and it's going to jam them together into one whole entire string just like this. I'm going to go into here and I'm going to type in .NET watch run and watch what happens. You are going to be presented with a porcupine puffer fish. Boom, right down there. We've got our porcupine puffer fish. No more regular puffer fish, porcupine puffer fish. So as I mentioned before, my family is going to try to stop me from buying a puffer fish. I anticipated this. And what we're going to do is we're going to create what's called a template literal. And template literals allow us to create strings in complex fashion. And it's just syntax to make your string writing a lot easier. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into here, I'm going to type in console.writeline. And the way that you build a template literal is you put the money sign followed by two double quotes. Within here, I am going to firmly let my family know that I am buying a puffer fish and nobody can stop me. I am buying. And in here is where we're going to put our actual variable so that we can change it later. So maybe I want a blue dot and I want to let my family know that I'm buying a blue dot. We can go ahead, we can just change that variable. But right now I'm just going to stick with porcupine puffer fish. I am buying and in there we put our variable and I'm going to say, you cannot stop me. I'm going to put that in nice little exclamation mark so that they everybody knows I'm buying it. Nobody's going to stop me. So the next thing that we're going to talk about is read. And in the context of a console app, read is easy. Pretty much the only way that you're going to be able to read data in a console app is through console write line. And it's a gimme. We've been doing console dot write lines a lot. So let's just go ahead and move on to an update, which is going to be a lot more complex. And it's going to be more complex because you have to navigate this concept of immutability. And in order to learn the right way, immutability, which is the right way, which is what we want, we have to learn what we don't want. I'm going to show you how you could, in theory, manipulate the data in a non-immutable way. And the way that we would do that is we go into here, and if you're from the world of JavaScript, you can actually reach in and try to grab the very first element. And let's just say that we want to capitalize the porcupine. The way that you would do that is you go into here and you press P. But Notice that C Sharp's not going to allow us to do that, and it gives us this crazy error. And this is because C Sharp knows you're trying to mutate. C Sharp does not want that. So let's talk about a way that's immutable that we could actually mutate this data. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this string new pet fish, and I am going to replace the porcupine with a blue dot. I now want a blue dot puffer fish, and I'm going to go into here, and I'm going to get my old variable, and I'm going to replace this, and instead of the actual porcupine, we're going to replace it with a blue dot. So I need to first put the porcupine, I need to make sure that's actually spelled correctly. So yes, that's spelled correctly, and then I'm going to go into here, and I'm going to replace it with blue dot, because I now, I don't want to, a porcupine puffer fish is far too dangerous. I know that I'm changing my mind a lot today, guys, I'm sorry, but. Sometimes, you know, you gotta be stern. But I'm going to go down into here. I'm going to toss this into a console.write line so that we can actually read this data. We can see that it has actually been replaced. And when I do this, watch what happens. So go down in here, and instead of the porcupine puffer fish, we now have the blue dot. Mission accomplished. So the next thing that we're gonna be talking about is a delete. And a delete is tricky. It's almost like a philosophical question with strings. If you're creating a new string each time that you initialize a string variable, how are you going to actually do the delete? And you would be right if you asked yourself this question because I Googled this. And I don't think that there's actually a way that you can just rip a string out of memory. What you want to do is you want to use this thing called a string builder. And a string builder is going to make it so that you can manipulate strings without the actual C Sharp compiler creating one over and over. And if you are manipulating a string at thousands of you know, iterations per second, 
you'll quickly fill up your memory and you'll start to have memory problems. So if you're worried about delete, you probably don't want to delete strings out of memory. What you more than likely want is what's called string builder. And some of this syntax you're not going to be familiar with because it is kind of advanced, but just kind of follow along in. I want a crab, like I do want a puffer fish, but I also want a crab too. So I'm going to call this new crustacean. Was gonna get a lobster, but I was like, people are think gonna think I'm some kind of weird Jordan Peterson dude. So I, we're, we're gonna do the crab. And we're going to do what's called newing up. And this is going to create a brand new object. It's going to create a brand new data structure for us that we can then manipulate. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into here and I am going to add a fiddler crab. I want a fiddler crab. So what I do is I go into here, I'm going to say fiddler crab, and we're going to go ahead and append it to our actual string builder. And what it's going to do is it's going to take this actual fiddler crap, it's going to place it within here and watch this. Now we will have a immutable way that we can actually manipulate our data or our strings without having to worry about memory management. I'm going to go into here, I'm going to put new crustacean, also gonna cons uh, comment out some of these console logs so that it's more legible and watch what happens. We go down here and Let's see, oh, boom, we now have our fiddler crab. And last but not least, we need to figure out a way to actually delete things from the string. How do we actually delete? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to go back, get our new crustacean that, crustacean that is actually uh, part of the string builder. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna search. Maybe there is a little removing here that we could possibly remove the fiddler crab. Let's just say we wanna remove the fiddler crab from it because I need to be less specific. So what we're gonna do is, I just found a remove. And what we're going to do is we're going to specify the start and then we're going to specify the end where you want the actual uh, string character to be deleted. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna set that to eight and I believe that that is enough just to, boom, get rid of this fiddler right here and just have the crab. So what I'm gonna do is go uh, console.write line and I'm going to pass in new crustacean and let's go ahead and see if we got rid of the fiddler crab or fiddler. So go down here and boom, no more fiddler, just crab. We've we, congratulations, you have deleted. That is the end of the video. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, make sure to smash that like button, smash that subscribe button, and as always, thank you for watching.